I'm surprised it's not a little more. Okay, so I'm drilling my hole for my uh, solar. So here's the access hole. I basically I drilled it from the inside. Uh, found a place where the rib is high so that when I put my cover on, I'll just build up the sides with butyl, but any water would tend to go down here. So if there was like a leak or something, it would, it would come down here rather than up on the top. So if I did it like this, then I would have to build up all of that and there's possibility that water could pool inside there and fall through the hole. So I think this way is much less likely. Now it is a little close here. I was kind of guesstimating when I went from the inside. And, uh, but I just verified that the, the rack will slide over that. So that should give me enough room to get that and then have the, the wires kind of go in at an angle like that. So for the, uh, for the pass through the hole, I'm basically I'm going to put a grommet in there. So I've, I've filed it down and I've painted it to make sure it's rust proof. And so I'm going to put uh, a grommet in here and then the wires will pass through here. So that will protect them from the edge of the metal. Yeah, this is just a kit that I bought off of Amazon. So here's the grommet. Just kind of squeeze that into there, into the slot. And so that'll protect the wires from the edge of the metal. Now I just got to put butyl on the bottom of this, build up these valleys here so that they're high and it'll sit level like that. Okay, so I got this all set in here. It's pretty sturdy. So I'm going to put some Eternabon around the outside of this just to um, further hold it in there. Um, the wires are going through this uh, here, through the hole, into the van. Um, I snaked, snaked one end over to here, and my other is, comes into this wire. These currently are hooked up in in series, so I'm going to see how they perform, especially when the the one is over top of the other. So normally in series, if you get shading, it'll take a panel out. If it takes one panel out, it takes out the whole string. But these are half cut cells. And so it should still see some power here in addition to that one. So I'm going to see how that works. If it doesn't work, then I'll just uh, wire them up in parallel. So the advantage of series over parallel is uh, smaller wire. So you can have, you have a higher voltage and less amperage so you can use smaller wire. With parallel, you get a lower voltage, higher amperage, which means you need a, a larger wire depending on the length. So you have to figure out the length, uh, your total wire travel. But the advantage of it is if your panels are like this and one is shaded, it won't take out the other panel. My uh, solar controller, can take up to I think it's 130 volts input and it'll put out 30 amps output that's kind of low uh, I may upgrade that to a 150 50 um, the voltage is fine but the amperage is kind of low for what these panels will put out so I'm, I'm thinking that these will put out quite a bit of power uh, when I looked at the Victron recommendation for one panel, it's a 30 amp. For two panels, it's a 50 amp. So I may wind up changing that out. Okay, there's the uh, port. I'll turn a bond up. So I think that's going to be good. Um, one thing I'm going to do as well is use this turn a bond tape on the wires to keep them kind of in place. So when it's sliding back and forth, I don't want it to get the cords tangled up. So I need to secure them in a way that'll keep them free of the mechanism. Okay, I got the solar run. Uh, it's coming from up there, down, through there, uh, underneath the bed. It comes in across, comes into this breaker box so I can turn it on and off at will. 
and then runs into my solar charge controller right there. And currently I'm getting 267 watts of power. And that's with the solar panel out. So if I push it in, it should go down. And it's down to 100 watts. Two hundred fifty-six, two sixty. Now uh, the panels are kind of dirty. Maybe it just needs to be cleaned off too. But yeah, seems to be working. So for the solar wire coming in, I use loom to go up through that grommet, so that it, um, the grommet itself is not enough to keep it from um, moving out. And so I just put the loom in there just for added protection and then it comes down through there. I also added a safety belt wire there for my battery so they don't slide forward this way whenever the van turns. And then here's my display showing the charger bringing 256 watts across. Okay, I'm getting ready to do my alternator charger. So I got my wire. It's going to go up to that terminal there. I'm going to have a breaker in here somewhere. I haven't figured that out yet, but it's coming underneath this uh, pad here. So this is a sponge underneath there. So it's, I'm not concerned about it um, doing any damage to the wire. Plus, uh, you're not really putting a lot of weight on here. It's mostly just a foot rest. So it's coming down under here. So I took off. There's a trim piece here, it's just uh, three screws, and that pops right off. And then this one, um, there's two here, one here, one back here, and then two up here, or one up here. And then that thing just kinda, it kinda rocks up this way and hooks underneath this. I loosened this up, this column as well, there's just two screws there. So it's, it's pretty simple. It's um, not that bad it comes out uh, you might have to maneuver a little bit to get it out of there but it comes out um, so I, there's a hole that goes through here um, I did enlarge this because I was originally going to do um, two wires but then I thought about it uh, I could just ground the other wire to chassis since the battery is grounded to chassis so I took that out put one wire through I got it wrapped in a loom and so then it also goes down underneath here and there's a hole here there's little plugs that just are sitting in these holes you just pop that plug out and then you'll get access to them uh, I put in a plus nut here this is a 5 16 plus nut so there's an example of the hole right there so the plus nut kind of goes up in there uh, you got to do it a little at a time because there's not quite enough room for the plus nut tool so just move it in squeeze it a little bit, move it in, squeeze it a little bit, and eventually it'll cinch down. And I got the whole thing done up in the loom. And then so I'm gonna run it back, run it up through another hole, and then back to the, run it back, run it up through another hole, and then back to the uh, alternator chargers back there. So this is where it came up. Um, these are, this is the wheel well here, and then there's three, um, cavities here with that had covers on them. If you reach down in here and back this way, there's a, a slot and there's one over here as well that you can reach in there as the wire is being pushed up and you can direct it to come out this way. Um, so I got it coming up through here. I'll cover these back up. So it's coming up through here, down through here, and then right up into this. So this, this is the power feed for my um, alternator chargers. 
So to get this thing off, you basically you do undo these little screws and then loosen up this uh, this bolt here and then that whole thing will pop off. And it's generally a good idea to remove your, or your negative. So it's basically just flip that forward and this will pop right off. Very easy. Um, this container here, it's just these two little latches right there, one there, one there, and then this thing will come up. Okay, so after you get the battery positive off, this, this harness here, there's two holes that you have right here. This one is obviously from the main uh, bus bar of the, the uh, battery. And so you need a, a post here and a post here. And so the way that um, this is the bolt that I bought, it's from McMaster Car. It's a square head and it's a one half inch here and then it's a 5 16 8 there. And then if you look on this side, there's a square hole there. That's where our, our bolt will fit into and that prevents it from turning when it's in there. So I'll just pop these through like that. And then when you put two bolts on the other side of this, you'll have a good strong uh, connection. So on the other side, we have our bolts up through here. And then I can run my 80 amp fuse from here to here and then connect my wire to there. So you can either try and reshape. Um, this is, the I think, the upfitter's connection right here. It's a 70 amp fuse. Um, but this is a very narrow little terminal. So you can try and reshape a, a lug to fit in there. And it's going to be a lot of grinding. Or you can just do this and then add what you need in here. It's a little easier. I might have to shave these posts off. I'm not sure how how long that's going to be, if this cover is going to fit over it or not. Okay, so there's the 5 16 uh, threaded square head bolt. It's a one inch long, and I just verified that it does fit underneath the cover when everything's snapped down. So that's what it looks like once you've got it up. Okay, so this is where my DC to DC charger gets its power from. So you can see I put the, um, the fuse in between these two. So I have a, uh, the, the bolt coming up, square head bolt, and I have a lock nut on top of that. And then the fuse and lock nut on top of that, the fuse and the terminal and the lock, top, lock nut on top. Okay, so here on my uh, DC to DC charger circuit, I basically, I um, have the two gauge wire coming out of here. And I cut that short and I put a switch in here because I wanted to ensure that when I'm, when I power's off, I'm not drawing anything from the battery, from the vehicle battery. So I, this is just a switch. It's not really a, I mean, it's designed to be a circuit breaker, but I'm using it as a switch. And then I upgraded the wire from two gauge to uh, one aught, which is one, one zero, so zero gauge. So you have zero, two aught, three aught, and four aught. Those big ones are the four aught cables. So this is one aught. Um, that's <clears throat> because I'm I'm drawing um, each one of these probably 30 amps. So I wanted to make sure I have a big enough wire because I'm about 15 feet um, from here to the front of the van. So basically, this is acting like a terminal. So I have a big, large gauge wire feeding my terminal. And then the, I have it the same on the other end. Through here, I originally had two aug coming through here. But now I have uh, one aught wire, one zero, coming to here. And then there's a, a terminal in there that I um, tacked to the, the wall of the van and then from here back to the battery it's two odd so again it's it's a short distance so the wire is sufficient for that short distance uh, once it gets to here it jumps up to one aught and that'll carry the maximum current to the back and then again drops down to two odd 
when going into the the fuse box up there because I can't go any bigger than that. It won't fit. So I upgraded this to a 50 amp because uh, I got 700 watts up there and I think it's just it was not um, the 30 amp was not uh, enough to fully util utilize the solar panel so I just got that. I'm gonna hold on to the 30 amp um, possibly sell it I'm not sure but um, I could always use it if I wanted to set up another pair that were a different size and then I could have even more solar in one shot.